Today I want to share with you an old-fashioned apple pan dowdy recipe. This dates way back to the 1700s, maybe even before, and was a favorite of Abigail Adams, one of the United States First Ladies. But the best thing about this dessert, it's so easy to make, and if you've never made a pie crust before, this is the one to try because you can't go wrong. You cannot mess this up. It's 100% foolproof. Hi, sweet friends. I'm Mary, and welcome to Mary's Nest, where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods, like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning how to be a modern pioneer in the kitchen, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, the first thing I want to do is wish a very happy Independence Day to my sweet friends here in the United States. And I thought it would be a lot of fun to make a recipe that dates back to the early American days. Now, the first thing I want to say is if at any time you want to jump ahead in the video, I'll be sure to have timestamps in the description underneath this video, as well as in the pinned comment. And I'll also have a link to the recipe that'll be over on my website. And you can print that out, download it to your phone, whatever you want to do. Now, if you've never heard of an apple pan dowdy, this is similar to an apple pie, but there's no bottom crust and there's something very unique about the top crust. The top crust is cut into a lot of little pieces and then basically shingled more or less on top of the apples and then baked in the oven. And then halfway through, you pull out your pie and you press down on all the little shingled pieces of pie dough and all of the delicious juices that have been released from the apples come up and kind of cover the dough. And this makes a luscious pie crust, regardless of whether you're a good pie crust maker or not. All of those bubbling juices on top of the pie crust make something that's luscious and just ooey gooey and delicious. And the reason that this pie crust is so easy and basically foolproof is that it doesn't really matter what your level of experience is at mixing your dough or rolling out your dough because it doesn't need to be light and airy and flaky the way it normally would need to be when making an apple pie. Instead, no matter how it turns out, it's going to infuse all of those wonderful apple juices and so you don't need to worry about what consistency your, your pie dough was in. Now today I'm going to use my food processor, but you can certainly do this in a bowl. And if you have one of those pastry cutters or just two forks or two knives, any of that will work to bring this crust together. And as I said, this pie crust is so easy. Even if you're just using your hands to crumble it all together, it'll be fine. Now what I've got in my food processor is two thirds cup of an all-purpose flour. Now generally, yes, you know I always like using whole grain flours, but I find for pie crust, really an all-purpose flour works best. Now you can use any type of all-purpose flour. I'm just using the basic one that you can find at the grocery store. But if you have an all-purpose einkorn or you have an all-purpose spelt, either of those will work as well. And then you're just going to need a teaspoon of sugar. Now I'm using Sucanat, that's the dried sugar cane juice. But if all you have at this point, depending where you are on your journey, transitioning to a traditional foods kitchen, you can certainly use white sugar. And over here, I've just got a half a teaspoon of salt. So they'll both go into the food processor. Then I'm just going to pulse this for a few seconds to get everything incorporated. Now what I've got here are six tablespoons of butter and I've got it cut up in a lot of little pieces and I've frozen it for about 15 minutes or so so that it's nice and hard. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump this right down into the food processor. Now I'm going to go ahead and pulse this just about maybe six to eight quick pulses to the point where the butter is the size of little peas mixed in with the flour. After you pulse this about six to eight times, you'll see that the butter now is the size of peas. Now, if you're doing this with knives or forks, or whatever the case may be, it's the same process. It may take you a little longer. 
Next, you're going to need a tablespoon of sour cream, and we're going to add to that sour cream three tablespoons of ice water. And to the sour cream ice water mixture, we're going to go ahead and add in a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And this is just homemade vanilla extract. I have a video where I show you how to make this. It's very easy to do. And so I'll be sure to link to that if that's something that you're interested in. But any vanilla extract you have will work just fine. Then you just want to take a little whisk. You know me, if you've been with me for a while, you know I love my magic whisk. It's so easy to use and it just really mixes things beautifully. You're just going to go ahead and give this a little good mix until it's just a nice uh, liquidy solution. Now I want to mention you only want to use butter when you make this crust. You don't want to use shortening and you don't want to use lard. You want to go with 100% butter which is going to give it a wonderful flavor. But there's also another reason why. And the reason that you just want to use butter is because if you were to use shortening, which you know I wouldn't recommend because that's such a processed food, but if you used shortening or if you used lard, which I would recommend, the problem is it will make too much of a light flaky crust. So you know I'll often share with you butter and lard together make a wonderful pie crust and almost foolproof in many ways. The lard is wonderful to come to the rescue if you're new at making pie crust and it'll make a lovely uh, flaky crust and yet you have the lovely flavor from the butter. But because this is a dowdy, a pan dowdy, when we go to dowdying <laughs> the crust where we push it under the apple juices, if it were too flaky a crust, it wouldn't hold up to that process. So that's why this is so easy to make because you really can't go wrong. You're not trying to get a beautiful flaky crust. And the reason we're going to go ahead and add in the sour cream is because it really gives a nice flavor to the crust that kind of offsets all the luscious sweetness of the apples and the topping uh, to the crust, which we'll talk about later. So let's go ahead and add in this liquid. Now we're going to go ahead and pulse this maybe three or four times. We just want it to come together and make sure that all of the flour is moistened. If you see any flour that's not moistened, just continu continue to pulse it. After about three pulses, you might find that it comes up on the sides. If you're using a food processor, you won't run into this if you're doing this by hand. But if you are using the food processor, just come and scrape down the sides and then give it one more pulse. Well, this looks perfect now. And all I'm going to do is take a piece of plastic wrap and I'm going to put this down on a flat surface. I got my cutting board here and I'm going to dump my dough right onto the plastic wrap. Now all we need to do is just shape this into about four to four to five inch disc and then we'll pop it in the refrigerator. And it's easy to do by putting this on plastic wrap because all you're going to do is move in one side of the plastic wrap, press, pull that back, move in the other end, press, and little by little we're going to get this dough into a beautiful disc shape. Now as you use your plastic wrap and just keep rotating your uh, little dough mixture here. It's going to come into a nice disc shape. And there's something that I want to point out to you. You will see all those little chunks of cold butter. And that's perfect. That's exactly what you're looking for. Because when the crust goes into the hot oven on top of those apples, it releases steam as the butter melts and will make your crust nice and puffy. It'll puff up. So just continue to shape this around until you get it into something that looks like a disc. When you're looking at my up-close pictures, you'll see those little brown dots. That's just the sucanat. If you used white sugar, it'll just blend right in. When you get this into a somewhat disc shape, don't worry, it doesn't need to be perfect. Just take your plastic wrap and cover up your disc here and you're all set. Now all you need to do is go ahead and put this little disc right into your refrigerator and we're going to leave that in there for an hour. It'll allow it to cool up and be ready for the next step. Now while our dough is chilling in the refrigerator, I've gone ahead and started to prep the apples. Now you need between two and three pounds of apples 
And for me, that was a total of six apples. And it came in a little over two and a half pounds of apples. And I used two types of apples. The little ones that I used are the Fuji apples. I really enjoy those. And the larger apples are an apple that I really hadn't heard of before, but it's what my grocery store had. And they were called ambrosia apples. And it said something along the lines of a sweet, uh, aromatic flavor, something like that. So what I did was peeled and cored all six apples. Then I tossed them in the juice of one lemon. Now you know how I don't like to waste anything and miss out on any nutrition. So I zested the lemon also into the apples before I sliced it up and then squeezed it into the apples. And when it comes to cutting up your apples, again, there's really no exact science on this. Just do the best you can, maybe about a half inch each. Now, a word about these apple scraps. Don't throw these out. These are rich in nutrition. You have a couple of options. You can save them and then you can make a fruit scrap apple cider vinegar with them, a nice raw apple cider vinegar with the mother. And I have a whole series uh, showing you how to do that. And I walk you through the whole 30 day process uh, with three videos and a playlist. So that's definitely something that you wanna save these for. And optionally, the other uh, possibility is you could just go ahead and throw these into your vegetable scrap bag that you save for when you make bone broth. And then you can go ahead and throw these apples in along with those vegetable scraps, well, or these apple scraps along with your vegetable scraps when you make bone broth. It imparts a lovely flavor and adds a lot of nutrition. And all you wanna do either way when you go to save these, whether you're using them for apple cider vinegar or in your bone broth, is to just remove the seeds from the core. Next, we need a quarter cup of some type of brown sugar. You can use light brown sugar, you can use dark brown sugar, or you can use what I've got here, sucanat. And that's simply, again, as I mentioned earlier, the dried cane juice, the dried sugar cane juice. That's kind of the original brown sugar because the molasses hasn't been processed out and then put back in. It's simply the sugar cane juice dried with the molasses intact. So let's just go ahead and sprinkle that quarter cup right on top of the apples. Now I do want to mention, if you like molasses and you like the nutrition that molasses can bring to a dessert or anything that you might be cooking with molasses because it is high in iron, you can use molasses in place of the brown sugar. And that was actually something that was commonly done back in the 1700s when cooks would have been making this because molasses was easy to come by. So that would make this exceptionally traditional. Next, what I've got here is some cinnamon and salt. I've got a half a teaspoon of cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of salt. And you just wanna go ahead and sprinkle this right on top of your apples. Now just stir everything up so that the apples get nicely covered with the sugar and the salt and the cinnamon. It's gonna be delicious. And as you toss all this around, you're gonna see that the apples are starting to release some of their juices. Next, what we're gonna do is just set these aside and let them macerate a bit. Uh, that's what it means to let the fruit release its juices to macerate. So I'm gonna go ahead and set these aside and we'll get our dough and we'll get ready to roll out our pie crust. Well, after an hour, once your dough's had a chance to chill, just take it out and out of the refrigerator and unwrap it and put it onto a floured board. I'm also gonna just dust a little flour right on top and then we'll get ready to roll this out. And what we're looking to do is roll it into just about a 10 inch circle. But again, not an exact science, just do the best you can. The easiest way to do this is just keep turning your dough around after you roll it a few times and turn it again, <laughs> roll it a few more times. Little by little you'll get there and you'll have your 10 inch circle. Now don't worry if at any time your circle looks a little more like a rectangle, it really doesn't matter. You're gonna see what we're gonna do when we go to cut it up. Now once you get it into what roughly looks like about a 10 inch circle, you're going to take a knife or if you've got one of these pizza cutters, this works like a dream. Now what we're gonna do is cut this pie dough into about two to two and a half inch squares. And we're just gonna go right down the middle and then right down the middle of each piece or each half 
and then right down the middle again and continue on. So just keep rolling along with your pizza cutter or your knife until you have pieces that, as I said, are anywhere between two to two and a half inches. If some are a little bigger, some a little smaller, it doesn't matter. And all of your end pieces are probably gonna be a little misshapen, that's perfect. Now all you wanna do is pick up your pieces and put them onto a baking sheet. And I've just got some parchment paper on here. You can use wax paper, plastic wrap, whatever you have handy. And then you're just gonna take these and lie them down onto your parchment paper. And then we're gonna put those in the refrigerator, put this in the refrigerator and keep these chilled while we uh, cook our apples. Next, I'm just gonna take this plastic wrap that I used to wrap the dough, cover these pieces loosely and pop this in the fridge. Well, the apples look wonderful and they have such a delightful aroma from the cinnamon and just the lovely apple fragrance. Now, what you're gonna need is some type of frying pan. I just have a cast iron skillet here, but whatever type of frying pan you pick, you want it to be 10 inches in diameter and you want it to be oven proof because we're gonna go ahead and put this in the oven. Now, if you don't have a frying pan that's oven proof, don't worry. If you have some type of skillet, sometimes they have double handle, you know, handles on either side, or you have like a glass baking dish, something like that, anything like that'll work. Uh, a pie dish, um, even if you don't have anything that's round, you can still make this work in like a nine maybe by 13 uh, glass baking dish. Those are very common that people will often have. Anything like that'll work. But you will need to some type of skillet or frying pan that you can first uh, start sauteing your apples in. And then if you have, uh, if that's not oven proof, but you have something that is oven proof, you'll just transfer your apples over to, that, to whatever vessel you're using. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is put three tablespoons of butter in your skillet. And I'm just gonna set this to medium heat. Alrighty, well our butter is melted and now we're just gonna go ahead and drop these apples right into our skillet. Ah! <laughs> Once you get all your apples in, just stir them around in your frying pan to get nicely coated with that melted butter. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let these simmer covered for about 10 minutes. And I'm gonna put mine on a medium low heat because this burner tends to run a little high. Uh, so just kind of play it by ear based on uh, how you're used to working with your cooktop. Uh, but you just want a very gentle simmer. And we're just gonna leave that for 10 minutes. Now while those saute for 10 minutes or so, we're gonna go ahead and preheat our ovens to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. After that 10 minute simmer, you're going to notice that the apples have softened a bit and they've released a lot more juices. Next, you're gonna need three quarters of a cup of apple juice or apple cider. But don't worry, if you don't have either, in a pinch, water can work. To this, we're gonna add one tablespoon of cornstarch. And then you just wanna whisk this together until there are no lumps. Now, if you can't use something like cornstarch that because corn products don't agree with you, you could uh, try some tapioca, uh, preferably one you know that's been ground into a powder and use that in place of the cornstarch. And then we're just gonna take our solution here, our cornstarch and juice or cornstarch and water, whatever you have, and we're gonna go ahead and pour that right in. And then I'm just gonna turn up my heat a little and we're going to saute this for a couple of minutes until it thickens. Well, after a few minutes, these juices are gonna thicken beautifully. Now what we need to do is take this off the heat and put this onto a, a heat proof surface. I've got two bot holders here. And then all you need to do is take your spatula, wooden spoon, whatever you're working with, and just try to flatten out the apples so that they're in an even layer. Now get your pie crust that's all cut up out of the refrigerator, and then just start layering the pieces any which way. And it's fine to have, you know, a little cracks here and there. That's exactly what you're looking for. You're basically making a 
dowdy crust. And dowdy was, we don't hear that word a lot today, but it usually uh, referred to a person who, you know, was like maybe not pulled together, uh, not of the fashion, maybe not neat, something like that. And that's exactly what this crust is. It's just piled any which way uh, with no particular uh, fashion. And the reason that this was a very popular dessert, uh, especially in the uh, 1700s, the 18th century, is because a lot of times the ingredients that, that the home cooks were working with weren't of the same quality we have today. And they weren't always able to uh, create a really lovely, light, flaky pie crust. Uh, sometimes the flour was uh, not as finely milled as what we have, and there various a lot of other factors. But this was popular because no matter how their pie crust was made or what it was made with or at how it turned out, none of it mattered because you're going to see what we do as we submerge it and the juices come up on top of the crust, it just creates something that's luscious. So that's, that's the beauty of this. Uh, very easy, I think, to make dessert, yet extremely tasty. Now, as you put the pieces of dough down onto the apples, there's no particular pattern. You put them any way you want. Some overlapping is fine. It's all going to come out great. Then you want to take an egg. I've just got a large egg here, and I've cracked it and just beat it ever so slightly, and I'm just brushing it on top of all of the pieces of crust. Next, you want to take a tablespoon of white sugar. I just have a plain white organic sugar here and a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Now, the reason that I'm using white sugar here is that if you use a brown sugar or a succinate or anything like that, it may brown up too quickly and cause your crust to burn. So we don't want that to happen. So just go uh, with the white sugar uh, <laughs> for this topping and mix that up. I'm just getting in here with my fingers. And then we're just going to go ahead and sprinkle this all over the top of our dowdy crust. Well, I've got the sugar cinnamon topping all over the crust. And now I'm going to go put this in my 400 degree oven on the middle rack. And I'm going to let this bake for 15 minutes. Then we'll take it out of the oven and I'll show you how we dowdy. <laughs> the crust even further and then we'll put it back in the oven. But I want to mention I have a deep cast iron skillet here. In the event that you have a frying pan that's more shallow or maybe you're using a pie plate, something like that, if you want you may want to put a baking sheet underneath, uh, maybe lined with some parchment paper or some aluminum foil so that in the event that you get any bubble over it will make a mess in your oven. Well, this has been in the oven for 15 minutes and you're going to notice when you bake this how the little pieces of pastry actually puff up a little. They almost remind me of like a puff pastry. I think it's because of the butter. And the pastry will have a nice crisp uh, feel and sound to it. See if I can do this so you can hear. It's quite lovely. Now, what you want to do is take a spoon and start to press down on the crust, allowing the juices of the apples to come up onto the crust. And there's no particular rule to how to do this. And don't worry if the crust cracks, that's exactly what you want to happen. So just go around, you want to go around the edge. Now don't worry, you may not see a lot of liquid coming up uh, through the cracks that you're making. But we're going to put this back in the oven, and as we put this back in the oven, all these little cracks that we've made are going to allow that filling, uh, all those juices, to bubble through those cracks. I put this back in the oven for another 15 minutes, and all the juices bubbled up through the cracks that we made, but the pie crust still puffed up a little more again, so it's not depressed or soggy underneath, underneath all the juices that bubbled up. The juices bubble up and then the pie crust puffs up. So it's a beautiful combination. And let me just take this spoon and I'll see if you can hear this. But 
see it? So nice and crisp. This is going to be luscious. Now let's give this a few minutes to cool. Then we'll scoop some out. We'll put it in a dish. <coughs> Excuse me. And of course, we are going to top this with some ice cream, vanilla ice cream, because no apple pan dowdy would be complete with a little bit of ice cream. Well, I let this cool about 10 minutes. And now I'm just going to scoop out some of this and I'll show it to you up close. Well, this just looks wonderful when you scoop it out into the bowl, the, pa the pie crust, I was going to say pastry, the pie crust on top of the apples. Oh, it looks luscious. Well, let's get a piece of this crust with some of these apples. And I love the way the vanilla ice cream is melting, almost just like having cream in here, like maybe you might pour over a bread pudding or something. Well, this is a mouthful, but let's give it a taste. Mmm. Mmm. That is delicious. Now, if you would like more 18th century recipes perfect for your Independence Day celebration, be sure to click on this playlist over here where I've got lots of fun recipes, including some fun beverages that were very common back in the 1700s. So I look forward to seeing you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen, and I want to wish you a very happy Independence Day. Love and God bless.